What will happen after we stand before the Lord Jesus on the last day? Once we are judged for all what we did in this life and all that we failed to do. Well, if you believe that Jesus is your Lord and Savior who sacrificed his life for you on a cross so that you could be saved, then after God punishes you for the sins that were not forgiven in this life, and after God rewards you for all of your good works in this life, in the final judgment, you will then live with him forever in the new creation. But what does that look like? Well, today's reading the Apostle John received a glorious vision of what the new heaven and the new earth looks like. It is recorded for us in the book of Revelation, chapter 21. The Apostle John wrote, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this down. For these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage. And I will be his God and he will be my son. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars. Their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Then came one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls, full of the seven last plagues, and spoke to me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, its radiance like a most rare jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and on the gates the names of the twelve tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And the one who spoke with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city and its gates and walls. The city lies four square, its length the same as its width. And he measured the city with his rod, 
12,000 stadium. Its length and width and height are equal. He also measured its wall, 144 cubits by human measurement, which is also an angel's measurement. The wall was built of jasper, while the city was pure gold, like clear glass. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with every kind of jewel. The first was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysophase, the eleventh jacinth, the twelfth amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls, each of the gates made of a single pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. And I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it. For the glory of God gives its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. By its light will the nations walk, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. And its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. They will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. So far, our text. Praise be to God who has such a wonderful, glorious, new creation set aside for us when the time is right. Yes, God is going to make everything right. Adam and Eve disobeyed God and destroyed the creation that he made. And now you and I are living in this fallen and sinful world, clinging to the promises that God has given to us in his word, holding fast in faith to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who alone can save us from our sin, which we right now are in bondage of we could not become perfect in this life because right now our bodies are full of sin. But we do right now try our best to repent and do better because we know what will come on the last day. Yes, our faith in Christ when we die will bring our soul into heaven. But the last judgment still waits. On the last day, when Jesus stands before the earth and the books are opened, I pray that you and I will not receive much judgment at all because we do our best to repent right now, to try our best to do better, and we confess our sins before God all the time. But on the other hand, since God is the righteous judge, we will receive rewards for all of the good works that we did in this life. What will those rewards be? God doesn't tell us right now. Probably because... It is too great for us to even imagine right now. Let us give thanks and praise to the Lord our God, for he is good, 
His mercy endures forever. And He, one day, will restore us to life everlasting in a resurrected body that will live forever, that will have nothing wrong with it, that will be perfect. And we will be with the Lord in the new creation forever. Thanks be to God. Now, let us share this good news with as many people we can so they can share this eternal blessing with us. Let's bring as many people as we can into this new creation. Amen.